welcome to Pay It Forward. I've got a really sweet new design for you all today. It's a little crossbody bag and a little fox design and it's made of fabrics and felt and it's, it's actually quite easy to make. I've got a free pattern for you of course. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below and you can download your free pattern templates. There is also a list of materials and requirements that you'll need to make this little one. So let's get sewing. So here are the things you're going to need to make our little bag. So first thing you're going to need is your body, the main body part of your bag, which is the back and the fold over flap. This piece and the little front piece is actually cut from what I call felt fabric. And what that is, is I've just joined a piece of quilting cotton print to a piece of felt using heat and bond. That gives us a really stable, uh, certainly non-fray type of heavier weight fabric because this little bag isn't lined. It's kind of self-lined because it has the felt on the inside. So it's, it's, it's nice and tidy inside, even though we're not adding a lining. So you have those two pieces, you have your front and your main body piece. We then have the, the little face pieces and they are both, they are both interfaced with, I use a fusible uh, lightweight woven interfacing. You then need your little filler for the headpiece. Now I'm using um, stiffened felt because I find it's really good because you only need that one layer and also you can still, we need to still be able to sew through it. Um, so I find that that's best. If you don't have any stiffened felt, just an extra piece of felt to go in the center will work just as well. So then you need your little side panels for your bag because we're gonna put a little side panel in there. You actually need four and these have heat and bond applied to the back. We're going to be joining them together so that we will have two panels and into those panels, we're going to be adding our little D, D ring clips ready for our little strap. They're going to be sandwiched in between those two layers. So you need two of the little D rings that we have here and they are just little two, two centimeter D rings. And you will need also your little two little tabs. Now I've cut those out of felt and I have got heat and bond on the back just so they're a little stronger. You can just use, perhaps you've got some grow grain ribbon that will match your little project and, and you can definitely use that. But uh, I've given you the template for those little pieces anyway and we will be gluing those onto the little D-ring in a minute. You'll also need some kind of fastening. Now I've used, uh, I just use a Velcro fastening because I'm making this for children. So you can see there that I've just applied that there, stitched that one on. But you can of course use something like a, a magnetic clip closure and that will be fine as well. We also need all of our little face pieces, which are our ears and our eye pieces and our little nose. And they're all cut out with heat and bond applied to the back. And we're also going to need our little flower for the top that we have here. And I've actually cut my pieces out of double felt. Now double felt is just two pieces of felt joined together again with heat and bond. And that gives you a nice thick felt that is double sided, which is really adds a little bit of dimension. So you can see I've got the lighter and the darker green there. So, and we need a little button for the center of that flower, something that coordinates. We'll also need two little black buttons, preferably a little domed, very flat button for our, our little eyes there. And we're also going to need two swivel clips to be attaching our little strap. And those are also, if they're about an inch or a sort of 2.5 centimeter, something that will accommodate our little strap. And we're going to need some clear craft glue, something that's suitable for fabric. We're going to need some embroidery thread of some kind. I'm using pearl threads here today for doing our hand sewing. And we're going to need a strip of fabric for your, for your strap. Now that the length of that strap, strap will depend on who you're making it for. So I'm making mine for a child. This little one here, I have cut the strap to measure 110 centimeters 
by six centimeters. So it's six centimeters across regardless of the length, but you can measure and cut your, your strap to the length that you need or for the person you're making it for. I found that 110 centimeters makes a good shoulder crossover body bag length for even a, you know an average size adult. Um, so this one I've made a little shorter because I'm making this second one for my granddaughter. So our first step today, we're going to be starting and making the little face piece, but there's a few little things we're going to do before we do that, just in preparation so that glue can be drying while, the, while that you're working on the other pieces. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to, you can see I've already done it on this one, and that is I've taken this one to the machine and I've done a very close zigzag stitch across, you might be able to see it better there, and that just seals that top edge, gives it a lovely finish because we're not going to be lining the bag. And also you'll notice that on your back pattern piece, you've got little marks on your pattern template and make sure you put those in. And then we just do the same tight zigzag stitch around that top flap because that just seals that nicely. We're gonna be adding that face onto there. So that's our first job and that one is done. So our next job is we're going to glue our little flower stack in place um, before we actually sew it onto the front of the bag. It just keeps everything nice and together, makes the job a little bit easier. So I'm going to go for a little blue and lime green to match my print. And we only need a tiny little bit of glue. It's only just to settle those in their right position, pop your flower in, and I like to press that one down. I like to make that the little petals come in between each so that it's really quite a full looking little flower. So we press that one down and then we're just gonna add our little bottom green piece underneath. And then when we go to sew that one on, it's just much easier because everything's already in place and we're not trying to juggle too much there. And that one will just sit just across the middle and gives us our two little leaves there. You can see once we put that button on, they will all be held together. So now we can put that one aside to dry for when we get to that stage. And we might put its little button over there as well. And so, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue our little D-ring tabs in place, whether you're using a little bit of felt like I have, or whether you're using a little bit of grain ribbon, either is fine. You can see that I've already done this one. It's just nicely glued into place and it stops a lot of fuss and um, things moving and shifting when we're trying to sew them. So it's just a matter of slipping that one through, meeting up those edges, and you'll find this holds this little D-ring in nice and secure too. You won't be worried about it slipping out. So we just press that one down and we'll leave those two to dry also for when we come to that stage. And our next step is going to be to make our strap just so that we've got that one all ready. And you can see there that I've cut, I've cut my strip. This one, like I said, is a little shorter. And I've actually drawn a line straight down the middle. If your fabric is dark enough, you can do that. It just helps you with your pressing because we're going to press, you can see at this end, I've actually pressed my two edges in to meet at the center. And I've been able to do that easily because I've got a little center line in there. So I've pressed that side down and that side to meet it. And I do that all the way along. And then we fold it over to meet those edges. And well, then we're going to do our stitching. So we've got that one folded. And that's just the right size to fit into our, our little swivel clips there. And that will make the... The little strap. So once I've done that one and that's all pressed, 
The type of stitching that you do on here is entirely up to you. On this one, I've just sewn two rows of stitching, one down each side, and that has settled that, that little strap into place. But on this one, I'm going to just use a little decorative stitch because I've got the blue coming through in this little print, I'm going to use just a decorative, just a, a, a very wide zigzag stitch that will go all the way down. Now I've already done that one ahead of time so that you can see. And you can see I've just picked out that little bit of blue which will just tie in nicely with the bag there and I've just gone all the way along. So that sealed that little strap and it's nice and flat. And my next step is to, we're going to go ahead and zigzag those little ends. You can see that they're, they're, they're nice and neat and tidy. So we're going to just add a little bit more glue here and we're going to pop our little straps on onto our little lobster clasps, our little swivel clips. Again we're just doing this ahead of time so that it's nice and dry when we come to it. We will of course be sewing these but it's just a little bit of a fold over I'm just going to press that one down and I'm just going to add a little clip and that can just sit there and be drying while we're doing other things and I'll do exactly the same with the other end now our next step is to start work on our little face piece now I've removed my backing paper from my first eye pieces. As you can see on this one, we start with this piece here. Now have a look at your pattern templates for your positioning of these. Um, you want to go ahead and, and make a little measurement. Make sure that you're getting them the same either side. They actually sit around about four centimeters from this either side of the chin here. Make sure that they're central and that they're the same distance from the edge. And remember that we're going to be sewing all the way around the outside and you want them to be nicely lined up. Also, you want that that bottom curve is just tilting up a little there. But check your pattern templates because that's all laid out for you there. Now I'm gonna go and press those on with a hot iron and a protective cloth. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take it to the machine and I'm going to stitch very close to the edge in a matching thread for this one right around the outside edge of each of those pieces. As you can see here, where I've sewn in those little pieces, very close to the edge, it's probably only a millimetre and a half, and, uh, and that will settle those into place. You can see that I've stitched those first little eye patches into place, and then I've gone ahead and, and pressed on and stitched around my little, the little whites of my eye here. Now again, just check your your pattern template for the placement of those and remember always make sure that they're nice and even and we're still staying with a matching thread. So next we're going to add our ear pieces in exactly the same way. Popping those on, remembering that we're going to be sewing around that outside edge. We're going to press those on and also the little nose piece. The nose piece sits one centimetre from the very base of the chin to the start of the little nose there. Make sure it's nicely centered. And again, we're just going to use matching machine threads to sew those in place. So our last pieces to add are our little eyeliner flicks. And you can see there that they just sit over the top edge, just a little way from the corner of the eye, probably about a centimeter again and we want that little flick just to extend out over the outside and we want the top of that to cover up the little edge of the white section there. Make sure I always press one on at a time so that I can match the other one up because they, they can shift when you're pressing them on. So I will press those on and then I'm just going to stitch. I'm not going to stitch all around the outside. I'm just going to stitch one line right through the middle to eat from one edge to the other edge. It's a bit hard to see because it's black, but just a stitching line just to there and back just settles it nicely in place. So our final little, tu final little touch on the face is to add our little buttons. And you can see there I've just put a little mark in, measured them both sides so that they're the same. 
that little eye just sits on the lower side of this section, so closer to the center. And just make sure that they're the same either side. And I will just sew that one on with my extra strong black ribbon and thread. So now I have all my little facial features all put on. They're all in place and we can move that one aside. We're going to actually put in our filler, join our little head pieces together. So I'm just going to get my clear craft glue and I'm going to add my glue all over that piece and settle that one in on the front there. And with that little felt filler in place, now I've added more glue all over the back and right around those edges. And I'm just going to position my little front face exactly in line over the top there. And just be careful to line everything up and then give that one a good press down. If you've got some little uneven edges, we can always trim those up before we do our sewing. So press that one all around and make sure that all of those little edges are nicely pressed together there. And then we're going to leave that one to dry for around about 10 minutes before we do our, our final sewing. So my little face piece is all dry now and we can treat the edges of that little piece. Now I'm going to be sewing a blanket a blanket stitch around the entire edge of my little face piece like I have on this little one here and that gives it a really nice finish. If you're wanting to do something quicker you could do a very close zigzag almost a satin stitch around the on the machine around the edge. I would still use a darker thread to mark out that little shape that just seems to look better but today I'm going to be sewing it with a blanket stitch and I'm using a pearl thread and I've just come in from behind and I've hidden that knot there. I do use, I do have a very long thread. Um, I hate to run out. <laughs> uh, well, I hate to have lots of stops and starts. So I do use a very long thread because I do that. I do use a thread conditioner. So I just run my thread through that little wax thread conditioner and that does preserve your thread. It does help with knotting and, uh, and it keeps your thread staying nice and crisp, uh, even though it's, it's doing a lot of work through this section here. So I do recommend that. So our little stitches are going to be quite small, probably only about three to four millimetres. Now I do have a video that shows you how to sew a blanket stitch in, in great detail. But my first little stitch starts here. And with blanket stitch, we just keep our stitches the same distance apart. It's like a little box. We go through both layers and our needle comes out through the loop each time. And we pull that one in. Same distance apart. And out through the loop each time. And that will give us a nice little binding of those edges right the way around that little face. And it does take a bit of time, but it is such a lovely finish. And it's sort of really in keeping with the project, I think, that little hand stitching. So you can see that's going to give us a lovely little binding. It's going to close that edge, edge and it's going to have that lovely little stitch running all the way around, around the outside. So I'm going to make my way around the entire outside edge of that little face. Now that our sewing is completed right around the outside there, we're next, our last step for this little face section is just to add our little flower burst there. And I have a extra strong thread that suits my colors. And I've just come in from behind our little stack there that we've made with a little knot. So that knot will be hidden in between those layers. So we have less uh, stitching showing behind and you can see that that one little sit little one just sits just there just to the side and the little leaf will just cover a little bit of that ear there make sure it is positioned at the side because if you put it in the middle it looks quite odd um, and you could put it either side whichever you like 
so I'll just sew that one on with my button. There we go, so that one's all done. We've got a beautiful little face plate for our little bag and if you can use the uh, stiffened felt inside that little face plate, it really does make a difference. It holds itself so well and the whole little bag structure um, is really good. I think uh, um, stiffened felt is available at most craft stores. So we can pop that one aside now and we can continue on with the main body of our bag. So our next step in the process is we're going to sew our bag front to our bag back and we will put right sides together and we're just going to sew just with a four millimeter seam allowance we're going to sew that little bottom seam here. Make sure that you really back and forth at the start and the finish. You can see that I have stitched that uh, centre seam and I have actually pressed that out with my iron. And our next step is to add our little Velcro pieces. Now you need to check your pattern template for positioning of those ones. So you'll see exactly where they sit and make sure that you take a measurement and glue those into place. Otherwise you may be using a perhaps a magnetic closure and make sure that that's, those are exactly the positions where they go because it does make a difference to where our little face sits on the bag. So I have those glued on into place and I will just be stitching around those once that glue is dry. So our next step is to create our little side panels which incorporate our little, little D-rings. So I've removed the backing paper from my little my little side panel pieces and so I've got heat and bond on each of those pieces so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one to the iron and I'm going to press my two panel pieces together I'm going to line it all up and when I do that of course that little d-ring tab is going to be captured in between those two pieces and then we will have a nice piece of double felt for sewing in into our side panel which we're going to be doing just as I have on this one. So I'm going to press that one into place and I'm going to just sew a top stitch across that top edge just to really secure that little, that little tab in there and I will do that with both of my little side panels. So there you can see I've stitched my little Velcro pieces into place and I have my, my little tabs all pressed together and with my little row of stitching across and so they're ready to sew into the side of the bag. You'll have markings on your pattern templates on this little piece which is your centre base mark. Make sure you put those in now because we're going to need that one because our next step is to actually pin this one into place. So what we're going to do is we're going to match up that little centre mark with one of the centre seams and we're not turning this little bag through. So I'm going to put my pin straight through where that centre mark is and straight through that seam. Through both layers then I'm going to take my pin I'm going to take up some of that fabric on the other side and I'm going to push my pin head all the way down. So putting in a gusset like this is more about the pinning than the sewing. Once you have it pinned easily or correctly it makes it easy to sew. So again we're going to follow that little, put those two edges together, the pin through both, take a little on the other side, pin head right the way down. So that we're actually pinning it in the shape that it's going to be sewn. Um, if you put your pins in flat, of course it makes it very, very difficult. So again, through both, and your pin comes down, pin head right down, and they'll all be lined up. Now you can see here that we've got our mark at the top of the, of the flap where our sewing went to, and that's the mark that we're going to. So it's just a matter of pinning this one right the way around and we'll continue on and right the way around to the other side. You'll see that your little pattern piece will match up beautifully 
and um, making sure you've kept all your seam allowances the same that will match up beautifully I'm going to pin that one all the way around now that I have that one pinned into place there you can see that we're going to be sewing it exactly how it's going to sit just as I have with this little one here and the stitch we're going to be using is just the same blanket stitch that we sewed all around the outside of the head there we're just sewing it on a on a different angle but it's the same stitch so I've got my needle with my pearl thread I'm going to go for the blue I'm just going to come in in between those two layers there on one of those pieces that little knot will be hidden in between that little start of that seam that we're going to be making and again I do have a video that shows you how to sew the blanket stitch in great detail you can check that out if you haven't sewn that one before but we'll do a couple of stitches here first of all I'm just going to do one over the top of the other so it's through both layers with your needle and we're going to come out through the loop every time you can use contrasting thread if you like whatever suits your project so I've got two stitches there and that's really locked that little top section in and now we're going to go ahead and continue on right the way around I just like to hold that little thread over my finger there it keeps it out of the way and that's going to create that same little binding edge and it's going to close those little side seams nicely and it has the benefit of giving it a lovely decorative little look and it's a very folksy sort of little style of bag so it's got that homely that homely little feel to it and by adding the stitching you can choose a color that perhaps is just a, a secondary color in your print and it'll really make that little print pop out you can see there that that little stitch is just going to close that opening up and we've got that lovely little binding so I'm going to work my way right the way around that piece right up to that top edge and then I'm going to repeat the same thing I'm going to pin in the other side and stitch that one around in exactly the same way so there we have our little side panels all sewn nicely into place and our next and final step is to add our little face piece and the way that we do that is we're going to be first of all we're going to be gluing it to the front of the flap and then we're going to be stitching it on through all of the layers just in the little eye section over the stitching that you've already done but because it's quite thick I find it's much better to glue that little one in place first and that way we have more control over the, the little project moving so we're going to be gluing that little one into place now where that one actually sits is about one and a half centimeters from the bottom so just take your time to measure that one because we, we need that to sit exactly right and we need it to be straight and you want to have it all lined up so that it's the same distance either side and it's all straight and lined up and then we're just going to add our craft glue and I like to add it just to the flap and not too far up so really just about halfway and a fair amount of glue and we glue it because putting it under the machine to sew that final bit into place we don't want it to move so just enough glue there to hold that one into place
and then it's just a matter of positioning that one. Making sure it's straight. And lining it all up. Make sure your measurement's right and press that one down. So pressed nicely into place and you can see it's nice and even both sides pressed right down to the base there and then we'll just let that one dry now it really does need to be dry before we do that final stitching so we're going to sit that flat for about at least 15 minutes or so so that it won't shift when we put it under the machine so now that my glue was dry I've been able to stitch those little that little face piece onto our front flap just by sewing on the machine just over that same line of stitching we did on the top of each eye there as you can see probably easier to see on the back and that just attaches that little front piece nicely the lower section is glued and it will sit nice and flat and there we have our little bag just add your little strap and you're ready to go absolutely beautiful for gifts I think I really love these little bags I think too if you're going to be using them you want to pop some things in there and, and have them a little safer perhaps just a little zippered pouch in there separate zippered pouch in there and that goes well I'll be giving this to one of my granddaughters and so she will just carry her little bits and pieces around in that and I'm pretty sure she'll absolutely love it so I hope you've enjoyed making it with me well thank you for sewing with me today I hope you've enjoyed making this little project with me if you have enjoyed this video you could give me a thumbs up that would be absolutely beautiful now remember to subscribe because I've got more of these little crossbody bags coming up I've got quite a few on my design table several little characters and I'm pretty sure that you're going to enjoy making all of them with me so in the meantime make sure everybody that if something good comes your way remember to pay it forward because everybody can and until next time, it's Hiru from me.